an alien invasion. Is it biblical? Of course it is. Clearly, I'm not here today as a fact witness. You can Google it. I think you just use the Bible, do whatever the hell you like. Just remember, it's not a lie if you believe it. Welcome back to Mystery Bible Theater 3000. My name is Caleb Haig. With me, of course, my lovely, lovely, lovely assistant, <laughs> Rob Van Hoff. I see that we're both wearing the merch. We got the merch on today. You two can get the merch at uh, MessiahMatters.com. That's the uh, that's the store. Be one of the 36. Be one of the 36. Rep the merch. Um, yeah, and also, if you want to submit a video for Mystery Bible Theater 3000, please do so by emailing us, cheg at torresource.com, C-H-E-G-G at torresource.com. Okay, well, we have an interesting one today. Um, before we jump into it, you know, I think that we're getting a... I think that, honestly, if we get bored of doing our regular show, we could just do Mystery Bible Theater 3000 all the time. There's the, the audience seems to really enjoy the uh, the twenty four seven man the banter yeah the the tw- yeah the banter of the Mystery Bible Theater three thousand. Now we've talked a lot about changing the uh, format so that it, it uh, so that we you know it looks more like Mystery Bible Theater three thousand. We talked one time about about uh, having cartoon you know having us be cartoons instead. That would have been really fun. Unfortunately, uh, the technology was not working for me, so. And I just haven't had time to uh, to to change things around, so I apologize. It's it's my laziness uh, that is infringing on the uh, on on the viewers' enjoyment of this show. I'm sure, but people seem to like it nonetheless. So we're gonna keep it the way it is. Uh, how you been, man? Uh, I've been doing well. I wanted to say, if someone's got ten Gs, they want to throw our way to hire a. a, a a tech savvy programmer, cartoonist, graphic design uh, situation that come and hook us up with all the hardware and software and specific and, the, and they're living in night and they're living in 1993 when 10 G's would actually hire somebody like that. What <laughs> did 10 G's? Come on, if you have a hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. All right, all right. I have nothing more witty to say, so we're just going to jump right into it. This one, Alrighty. I don't even know who this guy is, but I'm sure other people do. Um, it, it, we're going to give credit where credit is due. At the end of this video, a, he throws up like a splash screen with his name uh, and the name of his ministry on it. And I have no clue what we're doing today. Yeah, so, that's... Right, so part of the fun of Mystery Bible Theater 3000 is that 99% of the time, unless we're reviewing one of Rob's videos... Because uh, every once in a while, Rob will find a Mystery Bible Theater 3000 video that he wants to look at, which is always fun for me. But every once or so, 99% of the time, Rob goes in fresh. He's never seen these. He's never heard fresh. these. Now, fresh. Rob is fresh. Ra- yes. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, is that Rob can't see what, uh, what it is we're, we're seeing. He can only hear what we're hearing. Right. So... This is one of the reasons that, and this is good because uh, YouTube now does podcasts, and this show actually is part of a podcast. So, if you're just listening to this on the fly, I try to explain what I'm what we're looking at. And I don't think I need to do that because this is just a gentleman sitting in front of his Bible, explaining what he thinks the Word of God says. And uh, let's jump over to the uh, to the look of it. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to bring up this video. Let's press play. Here we go. You know, when he said on the cross, it is finished, that's because he had paid for the sins of the whole world. Everything was done. His earthly ministry was done. Now, he still had to go to hell and come back with the keys of death and of hell, and he had to rise from the dead and be seated at the Father's right hand. But We're going to stop right there. This, you know, at the very beginning, I thought that this is the reason that this video was sent to me. You know, I asked my, uh, I asked my uh, church history teacher, it seems like people are deemed heretics in the in the first 400, 500 years of the church uh, pretty easily, right? You know, if you don't believe something that the church believed, uh, you're a heretic. And I, I brought up the Donatist uh, movement, but I also brought this up. In the Apostles' Creed, which was not written by the Apostles, um, but in the Apostles' Creed, it says that... that what? Christ- <laughs> wait, wait, what? 
<laughs> what? Uh, yeah. It's the Apostles, Caleb. <laughs> it's the Apostles' Creed. Hello. The apostrophe S. <laughs> yeah. No, wait a minute. No, it's the Apostle S apostrophe. There you go. It's, yeah, it's but, not uh, a singular Apostle Creed. I hope I'm not shocking anyone by uh, letting the cat out of the bag that the Apostles' Creed was not written by the Apostles. Once again, uh, not the point here. Um, in the Apostles' mm. Creed, it says... Who's buried in Grant's tomb? Okay, sorry, go ahead. Um, okay, so it says that uh, Christ descended to hell. Now, this has been challenged by uh, numerous scholars, evangelical scholars today. And uh, I told my teacher in a, in a live class, I don't know if I agree that he descended to hell. So how am I supposed to navigate that when the church that I attend says the Apostles' Creed? And thankfully for, for me, my teacher said, I tend to agree with you. I don't know if he, I don't believe he went to hell either during those three days. And so, uh, but this has been the standard view of the church for a long time. Anyway, so I thought that this is why this video was sent in. Like, it, did Christ really descend to hell? This has nothing to do. This is not even cl close to the egregiousness. We're not, we're not even there we're yet. We're not even there yet. Okay. And so I, I'm, I'm not even going to try to take, uh, even, even try. There is a... Yeah, a you're right. If, if that, and it was, that would not qualify for a <laughs> it would MP3 not, don't worry. 3K. Don't, yeah, don't worry. Uh, but if, if you are interested in why some people... Now, I think that there are other places that you could go to in the Bible besides the, the what is it, first or second Peter passage. However, my father's done a great article on why he doesn't believe that the uh, Peter passage uh, is speaking to Christ going to hell. It is on TorahResource.com. I believe it's called, Did, Did Yeshua Descend into Hell? Then the, the title's longer. Anyway, but if you just put in hell, it'll come up. Anyway, TorahResource.com, go check it out. That is, it. we're going we're gonna to let this man talk more. Here we go. And he had to rise from the dead and be seated at the Father's right hand. But his earthly ministry was done. It was accomplished. He is not healing people today. He is not saving people today. He is not delivering people today. Those things were done 2,000 years ago. He purchased every bit of it. And then he turned around and gave that authority to us. And so it's now in our hands. And he's saying, I've done all of this. Here's all of my uh, benefits of my salvation. Here's the things that I've purchased for you. Now, command me to release these things into your life. Andrew Womack Ministries, by the way, for those who want receipts. So, I, obviously, the obvious question is, I mean, there, there, I think that there should be some grace given here because I would really like to ask Mr. Womack some clarifying questions on what he means by this. If we just take this video at face value, let's go back. Let's go back and hear what he said. Healing people today, healing by yeah. hand, but his earthly ministry was done. It was accomplished. He is not healing people today. I think that this, uh, so we'll just go one by one. He's not healing people today. I think that this really gets down to uh, Trinitarian doctrine, whether or not we believe in the Trinity or not, right? The, the, uh, it is a doctrine of the Trinity, which I fully believe in, that the that no act can be done separated from the persons can be separated from each other. In other words, anything that the Son does, the Father and the Holy Spirit are uh, are involved with because they are one. It's one God, right? It's not three gods. It's one God, and so anything that the that the Father does, uh, the Son, and the Holy Spirit must be uh, involved in some way, shape, or form because it's all one God. So when he says he is not healing people today, I would challenge this just on, once again, I want I, I want to be very careful because I've not spoken to, to Mr. Walmack here, and I, I, I don't know exactly, I don't know anything about him. So I don't know um, what his theology is. However, if we just take this video at face value, the Holy Spirit is certainly healing people today. Now, maybe he means spiritually. Am I off on this? What do you think, Rob? I mean, well, I the, the verb that came to mind for me is is the intercession verb. Yeah, he and continues it, to make intercession it, it, for us. For example, like I'll just give you a couple of verses from Romans eight and Epistle to Hebrews. 
Now he could say, okay, in the same way, the spirit also helps our weakness. This is Romans 8, 26 on. We do not know how to pray as we should, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with the groanings too deep for words, etc. He who searches the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is because he intercedes for the saints. And then again, Romans 8, 34, so at the end of the same chapter, Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes. And intercedes is, a, that's a what we call a, in Greek, it's the continual aspect there. Right. And so that's one verse that came to mind. And the other is Hebrews 7, right? It, it says, Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, he abides forever, holds his priesthood permanently, that's ongoing. Therefore, he is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession, intercession for, for them. Yeah. So I'm wanting to bring those passages kind of to the table to say, okay, what about these? <laughs> what about these? Is so, he? So I, I thought the exact same thing, and 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 what I thought was maybe he has just taken the the notion of our salvation is like the, because there are people, especially in in movements like the Hebrew Roots, you know, we hear a lot of the time you don't know that you're saved until the day of judgment. I've heard this multiple times. Even oh right, when, yeah, yeah. Even when we brought this up like on our sh on our Wednesday show, what, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, there were people in the chat room who were like, you don't know that you're saved until the day of judgment. And my point is, is that you know that you're saved because salvation is covenant membership, right? If we are part of the new covenant, we are saved. And so I know that I am part of the new covenant because I have become a covenant member with Christ. Absolutely. And therefore, I have that, re I have that covenant relationship with Christ. I don't have to wait and see if he's going to pay the debt on on Judgment Day. So I wonder if Mr. Womack here is is and once again I don't know anything about about the rest of of, of this either. gentleman's theology, but I'm just wondering if he has taken the notion of no 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 we know that we are saved that has been done from the foundations of the earth, and you know and now uh, that's I'm glad you put it that way. The the here's the one way to frame the question. Where is the location in space time of the fact of our salvation create, of right. our new creation? Right. And I like how you just said from the foundation of the world. Because the same question you say, when do we know that we're saved? Not till judgment day. We could just ask this. Okay. When did the Father know that Yeshua would die on the cross? Right. Yeah. Did the Father know what's what did did God the Father live in anxious uncertainty? Yeah, exactly. From from creation all the way to I wonder if he's the, gonna say yes. <laughs> yeah. Like is 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 he gonna buckle? Right. Oh no, look at okay, the father's like watching Yeshua uh pray in Garden of Gethsemane and he's sweating drops of blood. It's like oh, is the father like, oh he's I don't know if he's gonna do it. I don't know. Can he do it? Is he gonna is he gonna flee? You know, everybody else fled. You know, Moses couldn't handle it, David couldn't handle it. You know, I don't know. It's, it's, and then all of a sudden, when when he died on the cross, the father's like, okay, fine. But no, we you... know that's not true. Why? Because at the right. at the baptism, at Yeshua's baptism, the father says, behold, th this is my beloved son in whom I am well, well pleased. pleased. Right. Listen to him. And that verb there, talking about aspect, that's the perfective aspect. That means he hasn't even gone to the cross yet, and he has the full seal of the Father saying, this is my son. Right. Boom, period. And in him, I am well pleased. Boom, period. And we have to recognize we're dealing with this tension between God, the creator, mm -hmm. <laughs> and our little puny viewpoints inside creation. And, and time and space and all these kind of things. And so when is the securing of our salvation? I, I go to passages like, you know, Ephesians chapter one, for example, or first Peter, you know, the idea that before but God, the foundation of being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he gave us. Yeah. Made us alive together with him. Right. And that yeah. al that alive together with him is what, once again, this is bringing us into covenant relationship with him. So back to Womack, I, 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 uh, 
I would agree with him that that the uh, that the sealing of our salvation was done on the cross, but known from eternity. That was the point in time where where it's uh, where the event is done. But I believe that Abraham, you know, and P- and uh, we're getting a lot of comments. I don't know why the the YouTube algorithm has has allowed our dispensational v- uh, videos to be put in front of people so much, but. We're getting a lot of videos. Oh, you you never said once why dispensationalism goes against the Bible. Well, the reason why is because Abraham was saved the exact same way that I'm saved, which is faith in the Messiah, covenant relationship with God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus died for Abraham. That's exactly right. No other reason. It, same for Moses, same for David. Right. Right? I mean, yeah. Exactly. And so if this is what Womack is saying, now I think that he's gone too far here, obviously. Because he's saying more than your salvation was sealed at a specific time. And so we've already looked at he is not healing people today. Well, this I'm going to go back to this notion of, of Trinitarian theology. If the Holy Spirit is healing people today, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. We know this from Romans. You cannot be saved unless you have the Spirit of the Father and the Spirit of the Son, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay? So... If the Holy Spirit is healing people today, which we certainly believe the Holy Spirit is doing, right? When someone is healed miraculously, what would we say? That we did that because we prayed over them? No, of course not. It's God who does the healing. Now, it does seem like Womack is saying God doesn't have the ability or God doesn't have the, he is not going to maybe. He restrains himself from healing until we pray it and loose him to do so. Um, I don't, this is, to me, this is a very odd uh, view of loosing and binding and all that kind of stuff. I think that this might get into some very charismatic beliefs. Certainly God is in control. And and uh, the biblical authors, the authors of the biblical books certainly believe that God is in control, right? Certainly believe that. Let's keep going. He, so we're on, he is not healing people today. Next. Well, today, he is not saving people today. Once again, he's not saving people today. I think this goes back to your comments about ever living to make intercession for people. How How is it? Now, this is the one that I'll give him grace on. And the reason why is because, I, I mean, I, I think it could be said, well, this goes back to the notion that Christ already knew his chosen from the foundations of the world. Maybe that's what he means. But if that's the case, he has certainly worded this incorrectly. Right. Well, I think it seems to me that he, he, one of his points. Now we haven't heard the whole thing. I don't, or maybe we have, is that he wants believers who are anxious about their own status. Okay, I believe in Jesus, but am I righteous? I don't. I my life's a mess. I, you know, I am I am I okay with God? And he's trying to say, look, you, you, your your sins have been paid for. Isn't that natural though? And you don't need to you don't need to go and do a bunch of things now to to make yourself acceptable to God. Don't if you're thinking that way, then that is not good biblical theology. You you want to learn of what Yeshua has done for you already. And so if he's trying to make that basic point, I think that's a good Yeah. If that's what he, I if mean, that's, that's me trying to. I I agree with you, but the problem is, is that he has certainly not worded this correctly, at least in this short video. Now, once again, he might have a whole teaching on this. I don't know. This might be a, this might be clipped from something, and it looks like it is. But the but the simple point here is, yes, I would agree. We can be very secure in our salvation. We are saved. We know that we're saved now, and uh, being saved from hell on Judgment Day is not the only thing that we're saved from. Being saved means that we are saved from the bondage of sin and darkness and brought into the light, which is covenant relationship with God. Salvation entails the covenant relationship. That is happening right now. To, to those who, uh, who accept Christ, you come into covenant relationship with him. And, and the time, I'll throw another passage from Luke in here. To just to just throw a monkey wrench into this insistence of the moment of the cross being somehow the device the decisive thing because even this 
teacher said, well, of course, he still had to rise from the dead and he still had to ascend. So he even had to say, okay, there's stuff he hasn't done yet. But Luke 22, this is still at, at, at the supper. He says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission right. to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail and you when once again, when when once you have turned again strengthen your brothers okay yeshua is going to the cross but right. it's his language so he hasn't gone to the cross yet but his language to peter is not yeshua's not i'm going to go to the cross and die for your sins and then you're going to be good it's it's already a done deal and he's and then so peter says to him lord uh, with you, I'm ready to go both to prison and to death. And Yeshua said, I say to you, Peter, the rooster will not crow today until you have denied three times that you know me. So so Peter gets his, you know, Yeshua speaking the truth in love to Peter. Peter doesn't have an accurate self-conception. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm, you know, because he, he doesn't know the pressure that's going to come on with the being separated from Yeshua and the fear of you know, all the, the gangs and things that's going to happen. But here I see this is another time where we, we have to recognize Yeshua's perspective on the matter is from eternity. And so he can tell this is in advance of the, of the garden, advance of the cross. He can say, Satan wanted to sift you like wheat. I've prayed for you. Your faith will not, so that your faith won't fail. When you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. So, so what? But yet at the same time, saying you're going to deny me three times, but your faith isn't going to fail. That means you're going to come back around. Right. It's your denial of me is not the end of the story. I've got you covered. And so that is, did that not become true until after the cross? Right. I think it was true right when Yeshua said it to him. Sure. It was true. It was sure. So I um, mean, there, there was no scenario where Peter was not going to deny him three times. There was no scenario where Peter was not going to come turn around and be reestablished to, to, you know, confirmed in his faith and become a, a major voice in the early evangelical movement. Well, Walmack's next uh, comment is he is not delivering. I don't know how you could get around this. Certainly God delivers us today even out of bondage right those who are who who have not come to Christ are delivered out of that bondage he also says those things were done okay and actually this is where I want to come back into this video sorry 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 wrong wrong direction purchased every bit of it and then he turned around and gave that authority to us so they highlight gave that authority to us. And I think that this is actually where his teaching is. Is uh, I think that this is this is the crux of his argument here. I think that what he's saying is is that we are in control of praying, and and this is where I would go to like like hyper charismatic, uh, you know, like this almost seems hyper charismatic to me, which is like if we if like we have to pray for it, for it to happen. Cause listen to what he says. And so it's now in our hands and he's saying, I've done all of this. Here's all of my uh, benefits of my salvation. Here's the things that I've purchased for you now command me to release these things into your life. So it seems to me like what he's saying is if we demand are, Jesus. Yeah. If we don't pray these things to loose them or to bind them or whatever, then God won't do it. And to, to me, this goes to an open theism theology that God is not really in control, that we have some control. God doesn't know what's coming and that it's like it's all kind of a mystery to God. That's kind of how it sounds to me. Now, once again... Okay, so I would suggest he probably reads those passages like, uh, you know, where it's the the Greek is a certain way, but that some translations shift it where it says, whatever you ask, whatever you bind on earth Has will been, be bound in yeah. heaven. And so it sounds like the people on earth are holding the, right. holding the purse right. strings or whatever. Yeah. And, and uh, we're telling God what to do. And then heaven is changing depending on what we on earth are doing. Right. And that's that's this is not the Greek. The Greek says what you decide on earth will have already been decided in heaven. What it means is 
which is just the Lord's prayer, you know, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The idea is we're attuning to what is true in Psalm 119. It says your word, right, stands forever in the heavens. It doesn't say your word changes in the heavens as the as your people on earth make stuff up. Can I just tell you, by the way, the the, the, the person who sent this in is Stephanie, and Stephanie's our good friend. We 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 know Stephanie and her family very well. I've I've gone on vacation to hang out with with uh, her family, and and I love her parents as well. Stephanie, what are you watching? Like she sends in videos, like every it's probably how maybe is friends how, or people in her community? How is it that you are coming? Because we have one uh, we could do. Uh, now we already talked about this lady who reads her Bible backwards, and we've we've reviewed some of her videos before. But there's also a video that Stephanie sent us uh, that of this guy who says that if you pray the Lord's prayer, you're under a curse. And I that one looks really good for maybe next week. But the thing is, I gotta okay. I gotta clip it. I gotta clip it because it's nine minutes long. So I gotta I gotta pull out like a couple of key points that he makes. It's 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 a doozy. Anyway, um, I think that uh, no matter how you how you cut this, I think Walmack is wrong on this. It seems to me now that I've listened to the end several times, it seems to me like what he's really saying is that he is shifting. To an, or that he believes in an open theism. That is that God doesn't, God's not really in control of the future. He, he might be in control of a lot of different things, but he doesn't actually know what's going to happen because it, it's dependent on us and, and uh, the things that we do. And so God uh, will shift things according to, and you know, he'll shift things according to what we do, and, but he, do, he doesn't really know what's coming. He doesn't know the future. That's what it sounds like to me. And if that's the case, Womack, I would definitely disagree with that. All right. Um, I think think we've gone long enough on this. It's been fun. It's been real. Uh, if you have a video that you want us to look at on Mystery Bible Theater 3000, then please go ahead and send it. Chegg at TorahResource.com. I'm going to spell it for you. C-H-E-G-G at TorahResource.com. And you can send those there. And if uh, if we so desire and please, we will, uh, we will uh, highlight them on one of our videos. We hope that this video has been enlightening in some way to you. And uh, make sure to join us every Wednesday, 9.30 a.m. on YouTube. We might be moving that to a different platform soon, but for now it's still on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back next week with another Mystery Bible Theater 3000.